Good day. We're going to try and replace the power management chip on this iPhone 14 Pro today. Um, first, we're going to make sure it's the failed power management chip. So I have it under a thermal camera here, and you can see it's got a pretty distinct heat boom on the chip. So um, let's inspect it under the microscope and see what we can find. Now, under the scope here, you can see that there's a crack running through that chip stands out quite nicely with some rubbing alcohol. Now, in order to remove this chip safely, the first step has to be clearing some of the underfill around the chip. Uh, I use uh, the number 11 X-Acto blade or uh, the number 11 scalpel blade to uh, score a border around the underfill. I'm using it uh, have my hot air set to 265 Celsius at 60 airflow. And uh, at that temperature, it takes a it takes a few seconds for the board to warm up enough and then the underfill to soften. But once it's at the right temperature, the underfill comes off pretty easily. You don't have to apply a lot of force, but just be careful because if you go too deep and end up digging into the board, then that's pretty much the end of it. Like, it'll ruin the device. Or, at, at best, you might end up with a bunch of extra work, such as running some jumpers and traces. So, best to be careful. So, I have this process sped up here because, it, in real time, it's like watching paint dry. But, uh, yeah, as long as you're careful and... Um, you follow the temperatures up recommended, which is 265C at 60 airflow. So I'm going to use the soldering iron method to remove the power management chip. Um, I like to use a bit of desoldering braid along with the soldering iron. It helps increase the surface area in contact with the chip and helps heat it up faster and more evenly. Um, however, the iron I'm using right now is not large enough, so I switch it out to a bigger one. That makes the job a hell of a lot easier. Now, the board is at uh, 180 Celsius. Uh, it's on a bottom heater, and then I have my iron at uh, uh, 840 Fahrenheit or 820, about that. Um, when you see, uh, once the chip is ready to lift, you'll see the solder balls pop out uh, and uh, on the sides. And once you see that, you know you can go in with your tool and just pry the chip up and it comes off quite easily. Uh, if you go prying before the chip is ready, you will damage the board, so you have to be careful. But this method is very safe and you don't risk overheating the board this way. Uh, we were quite lucky with the removal of the chip. Most of the underfill stayed on the chip, so there was very little left on the board, so it made cleaning up a lot easier. Um, once, when you're cleaning the board, it is extremely important to first tin the pads with a bit of uh, leaded or low melt solder. It makes the process of braiding the board so much easier. Uh, if you don't braid, uh, if you don't tin the pads with uh, fresh solder, the lead-free stuff just does not wick as well. So you'll either end up pulling pads or you'll end up damaging the PCB. Uh, now, when I removed the PMIC, a couple of capacitors came off. So I'm going to put them back. But before I put them back, it's important to clear the underfill from the area because um, otherwise it just it's painful. I'm using about 300 and 30 Celsius at very low air, like 40 airflow, to put these capacitors back. And then because of the surface tension of the solder, once it melts, it pulls the component in place. Now, after you've tinned and braided the board, cleanup is very important. So I just quickly cleaned it up over here uh, with some alcohol and brush. Uh, I just skipped that part, but... Uh, uh, before you install the new chip, it's very, very important to inspect it. Uh, sometimes uh, 
it may not, it may have uneven balls or the chip might be damaged, especially because all of these chips are, uh, uh, if you bought it from China or whatever, uh, you don't know if the chip is good or not. So it's always good to give it a visual inspection. Uh, now, it's important to position the chip as best you can, uh, especially because the balls on uh, under the PMIC are so close together. Uh, if the reball is not even, or if the positioning of the chip is not perfect, you run the risk of uh, getting bridges under the chip. Now, to float the chip back, I use 340 Celsius at 60 airflow, and uh, that's more than enough. Once you see the chip solder uh, in place, it will move and align itself perfectly because of surface tension. But it's always a good idea to just give it that gentlest of wiggles to make sure that it is in place. Now, cleanup is very important. I can't stress how important it is to keep the board nice and clean. So I clean it here with some rubbing alcohol and a toothbrush and then um, putting a cloth on top of the board and brushing it is uh, a very good way to get it nice and clean. Uh, after the cleaning is complete, you can see uh, with a, with, <laughs> you can see that that's the board I changed the power management chip on. And uh, now we're going to power it on and see. It's the moment of truth. I'm just going to connect it to the board with my DC power supply and then prompt the board to boot at the power button connector using a pair of tweezers. And that should be good. Good thing is there's no main power short. Now to prompt the phone to boot, you gotta short the power button pin to ground and hold it there for a few seconds. And as you can see, we have Apple logo. The power management chip replacement was a success. And we have full boot, and the customer's data is saved.